right, welcome back to the next video in this grappling hook tutorial series inside Construct 3. In the last video, we got our grappling vine set up to swing and also to retract. And go ahead and take a look at what we have. So we know that we can shoot our target and it attaches our player and retracts him upwards to the length of 80 pixels. Coming right along, in this video we are going to set up how to dismount from the swing. Down here at the bottom, below all of our other code, I'm going to add an event. I'm going to grab our keyboard object out of the input folder, and I want to use the jump key. We're going to use it the same way we would as if we were on the ground, using it as a platform object. We have A and D for left and right, and W is jump. But we need to check for it again, along with another condition, to have an effect while we are on the vine. So I want to check for the W key is pressed. So this one right here, on key pressed, and I'm going to choose the key W, hit OK, we are done with that. And in our game that we have set up now, if I connect if I hit the W key, it doesn't do anything. In fact, my A and D turns our player uh, mirrored and not mirrored. But W doesn't do anything because we are attached to the vine and we are currently pinned to the end of that vine. So we're going to need one more check to go along with our keyboard check. And that's going to be the on vine instance variable that we created. And we have it up here for the grappling launch. And what on vine means is whether our player is swinging on the vine or not. So back down here, let's add another condition to this. I'm going to just double click on the far left part of this event. And if we go into our objects folder and grab our player, and we want to find the compare instance variable, and I want to know if the on vine is true because I want to know is our player attached to the vine and in this situation uh, yes we are on the vine and we press the W key that means we can uh, run this code which is going to dismount our player from the vine now that we are dismounting we want to open it up to where uh, this block of code can be true again so that we may launch another target so down here, once we dismount, we're going to want to set those variables back to false. So let's add an action, go into system, and we want to set the value of grapple launched back to zero. And then let's add another action, go grab our player object, go down to instance variables, and let's set the value of on vine to zero. So now we've set both of these to zero, which means these conditions are now true, so we can run this code again, which is how we launch the grappling target. Okay, as we were talking about just a moment ago, we are pinned to the end of the vine, and that's why our platform controls don't work. Our A, D, and W, our left, right, and jump, don't work because we are every tick pinning our player to the end of that vine. So now we can unpin it so that our player can dismount. So add an action, let's go get our player. Scroll down to the pin behavior and unpin. Now once our player dismounts the vine, we want to essentially reset the vine so that it may be called again once we launch another target. So there's two things with the vine that we need to change. One is the sign behavior, and the other one is its visibility. The OBJ grab vine is always in the game. We just set it to visible and invisible. We're not destroying it and recreating it. It is the same object that exists in the game at all times. We just change its position and its visibility. So now that we've dismounted, we want to set it back to invisible and we also want to disable the sign behavior so that it stops swinging back and forth. So let's add an action 
and let's go grab our obj grep vine object and scroll down to the sign behaviors and we want set enable and make sure that it is set to disabled and then we can add another action and go grab that vine again and we want to set its visibility set visible to invisible another thing that happens when we launch a target and it makes contact with a collision is we have the collision target on the screen and the vine hangs from that target but we're ready to launch another target after we dismount so we want to get rid of the target that is there at an action go get the target object and we'll just go ahead and destroy this because we create a new target each time we launch it okay one more thing I want to do in this dismount event when our player dismounts in fact I think we can probably check this right now uh, let's play this so we make contact we're swinging and if I hit the W key our player falls to the ground our vine is now invisible the target has been destroyed and we have our functionality back and we can throw another target because we reset the variables and then when I hit the W key the, the thing that I want to change is how he dismounts. When I hit the W key, we're hitting the jump key, and I have it set that way on purpose because instead of just falling and everything disappearing, I want to give him a little boost to where he jumps up in the air. And we can do that with one action, and we're going to use the, uh, the Y value of our player. So we talked about this a couple of videos ago about how the uh, X and Y value work inside the editor. If my position of my player is right here, that is a Y value of 768. That's the second number there. If I move up, that number goes down. See, now we're in the 600s. And if I move down, now we're in the 800s. So when we move down the screen, our Y value actually increases and when we move up the screen the y value decreases back in our event sheet so let's add an action and we can go grab our player object and let's scroll down to the platform behaviors and we want set vector y and you can see up here it gives a little description set the y component of motion that is exactly what we want so hit next I am going to subtract so hit the minus key and then I'm gonna say 300 that's 300 pixels from where our player is at the time we hit the W key and then I'm going to move this up right after we unpin I want our player to uh, be shot into the air and then uh, the code can take care of the rest of this after that so let's play that and I attach and when I hit the W key our player jumps up it's kind of subtle but it's enough to tell and it to me it looks a little more natural in terms of video game feel one more thing I want to cover here now that we are resetting variables so that we can throw multiple targets we do have one issue and I'll go ahead and play this again I'll show you whenever I shoot the target at the floor we have the code set up to destroy the target and it doesn't connect to anything I already threw a target and now if I click again I can't throw any more targets and that's because in our collision check with the floor or the distance traveling more than 500 pixels we disable the bullet behavior and destroy the target object but we never reset the variable so let's just set that up we can add an action to this event and go into our system and we want to set the value of grapple launch back to zero as in false so now it is zero and this is true again so we should be able to throw as many targets as we want so if I throw it at the ground it destroys it and I can still throw targets and if I click as fast as I can, I can only throw one target at a time until it travels more than 500 pixels and destroys the target. And if we attach, 
We can swing, we can dismount, we can throw another one, and we have a pretty good working grappling system already. Okay, let's exit out of that. Okay, let's scroll back down and right click in the area at the bottom and let's add a group and let's call this grapple dismount and it's just this one big long block of code we can drag that into that group and we should be done with the grapple dismount for right now and I'm gonna close up my retract so one more thing I want to add in this video we're going to add it to our collisions group and we're actually going to add it to the bottom where it says add event to grapple collisions sometimes what can happen is when we're too close the grapple might not take effect because when we created the retract and the swinging part we said if it's greater than 80 retract it up until it's 80 and once it's 80 just pin him there and he'll swing at the end of the vine what if we try to throw the target and there's not enough room and it's less than 80 pixels well none of this will take place because uh, this condition is not being met so when we shoot the target out in less than 80 pixels we need to do something about that so let's go over to our layout and i am going to give an example of what that does so I'm just going to sit our guy right next to the edge. In fact, I'm going to pull our blue out so that it's really close to him and we can play that. So we're less than 80 pixels right here. And if I throw my target, see what happened? Everything took place because the target made contact with the collision. So it ran that code and the vine starts swinging. Our angle was set even our animation was set to swing but our player is not attached to the end of the vine because none of this code was able to take place because it's less than 80 pixels so let's set something up for that I want to check for three things I want to check to see is our vine on screen is it now visible did this other code take place and it is now visible and then I also want to check if it is less than 80 pixels. And finally, I want to check our instance variable to see if our player is on the vine or not. So I'm going to add an event to grapple collisions group here. And I'm going to go grab our object vine. And I'm just going to type in visible is visible. If we double click on the left side of this event, we can add another condition. And I'm going to grab that vine again. And I want to compare the width of the vine. So compare width and I want to know if it is less than and let's just say 79 pixels because if it's 80 pixels the code's gonna work but if it is 79 or less then I want something else to happen. So let's hit done and then one last check let's double click in this left side and now we want to check that instance variable. So let's grab our player object and scroll down to variables. And we want to compare the on vine number. We want to know if that's true. And for this, I'm going to make it in a function. And I like to put my functions on a separate event sheet. For those of you using the free version, I'm not sure how many event sheets you can have. I think you can have more than two but I'm not sure. If you are not able to have a third event sheet, just make a new group, call it functions, and do exactly what we're doing now, and you can leave it on this main event sheet. Otherwise, let's go ahead and right click on event sheets folder and add an event sheet, and I'm going to rename this functions. Right click anywhere and say add function. I'm gonna call this grapple cancel and the first two things we want to do is reset those variables so let's add an action system and we want to set the value of grapple launched back to zero then we can add another action this time we'll grab the player object and we will set the value 
of the instance variable of on vine back to zero. Add an action. Go grab our vine. Scroll down to the sign behaviors and set enabled to disabled. Let's add another action. This time we grab the target and let's just destroy it. And then we want to make our vine invisible again. So add an action, grab our vine, and set the visibility to invisible. Now back over on our main event sheet, let's add an action to our new block of code, go into our functions, and grab grapple cancel, and call that. So now, when we go to play that, we are less than 80 pixels, we know, so I'm going to shoot it again. And that time, it doesn't connect. Well, it did connect, but then it uh, ran that code and reset us so we could throw it again. That is going to conclude the dismount part of this tutorial. So I'm going to stop this video here. I will see you in the next one, and don't forget to save.